This is a presidential election nobody expected. Call for June the 28th after Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi was killed in a helicopter crash in May. Raisi was an ultra-conservative seen as a possible successor to Iran's aging supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Whoever replaces Raisi could play a key role in the transition of power to a new supreme leader and in setting a future course for the Islamic Republic. The six presidential candidates, handpicked by the country's political establishment, took part in this TV debate. They include Iran's conservative parliamentary speaker Mohammad Bakr Ghalibov and Saeed Jadili, a hardline representative of the Supreme Leader on Iran's Security Council and a former nuclear negotiator. There is also one lone reformist, former health minister Masoud Pezeshkian. He's been out campaigning in Tehran, trying to appeal in particular to women voters. Hamid Reza Azizi, a fellow at the German Institute for International Security Affairs, says even Pezeshkian is towing the line. At least so far in the uh, first uh, presidential debate and also in the uh, kind of public appearances that Pezeshkian uh, has had, uh, we haven't seen uh, a strong uh, politician in, in his character. So um, he, on one hand, expressed explicit loyalty uh, to the Supreme Leader, which is not weird, which is not unexpected. But, you know, uh, if you want to uh, show yourself as uh, somebody different from the establishment, this is something that you would do at least in a kind of more, uh, you know, delicate uh, manner. Radio Farda listeners seem unimpressed, with many saying they won't vote. The reason for public's uh, lack of interest is that uh, they simply don't see any space uh, for real change. Uh, they see this uh, kind of uh, increasing domination of the political system by the hardline and conservative camp, and uh, the, o- the overall uh, political system getting uh, more and more uh, repressive and closed. Ultimate power in Iran rests with Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei. He's now 85 and it's possible the next president may find themselves overseeing the key transition to a new leader. Hamid Reza Azizi believes that's why the establishment is doing all it can to control the process. The so-called deep state, uh, which consists of the core leadership of the IRGC and people in the office of the Supreme Leader and also people from the uh, security establishment. That same deep state uh, is doing its best uh, to ensure that uh, one of the um, four candidates that basically belong to the hardline camp, uh, Ghalibov, uh, Jalili, Ghazi uh, Zadeh and Zakani, one of them, would be uh, the next president. Iran's new president will also come to power with the country arguably more deeply divided than ever. Young girls and women continue to be detained for not wearing a hijab or Islamic headscarf properly.
The detention and death in police custody of 22-year-old Masa Amini in 2022 sparked nationwide protests and a major police crackdown. Iran continues to face international isolation and regional tensions too. Western sanctions remain in place over its nuclear enrichment program. While it launched an unprecedented drone and missile attack on Israel in April, after Israel bombed Tehran's embassy in Damascus. The presidential contest is getting more heated. Here, an advisor to Pezeshkian walked out of a TV studio after his mic was cut off during a fiery exchange with a hardline panelist. He was cheered by his supporters. <laughs> An Iranian opinion poll from June the 13th to the 15th made Mohammad Bagar Ghalibov the clear leader with 34%. Jalili and Pezeshkian were running in joint second place with 21%. Turnout was projected to remain low at 52%.